a very good morning, good afternoon and good evening my dear friends. Uh, welcome to this TUCAM 2 lecture or course another NPTEL uh, MOOC series and I am Raghunandan Sen Gupta from the IME department IIT Kanpur. And this is the 26th lecture. So, as you know I, I would just take your permission again uh, summarize that. This is a 20 hour lecture which would basically be from, uh, uh, 40 hours, but considering the number of lectures each of half an hour it will be 40 such lectures spread over 8 weeks and we, have, we are in the 26th one lecture. Now, in the last class which is 25th one, I was summarizing that if you have a fractional factor models to the uh, uh, where the concept there are k number of factors and you are basically subsuming the, the effects. Uh, by using the concept of k to the power uh, 2 to the power k minus 2, which means that you subsume two generators subgroups and they were mentioned as p q and obviously, the third one would be p, in p into q, such that we are able to differentiate the overall effects of all the factors accordingly. So, there are k number of factors. Now, many of you may be thinking in the last class, what if we had k to the power minus 2 to the power k minus m, where they were k factors and m were the so called subgroups. It could have been done in this way, but the complications would be much more intensive, but obviously it would be a nice uh, way of handling the problems, but we will still stick in our case of uh, the fractional factorization model, uh, which is given by 2 to the power k minus 2. So, considering that we will proceed with the discussion. And this is the example and we basically go in the same way, analyze the problem, give the main table depending on the factors and the effects and then come to the answers. And the answers if you know that I would rather uh, lay stress on the factors and their effects rather than go into the nitty gritties of the calculations. So, I will just mention the values not go into how the values have been calculated because you have already dealt that many times in the initial. Um, lecture starting the 7th after the 7th one, because if you remember in the, till the 7th one we are basically completing few of the nomenclature and the basic structure of, of different type of distributions which are applicable. So, let me read the example. So, parts manufactured in an injection molding process are showing excessive shrinkage. This is causing problem in the assembly operations and assembly lines downstream from the injection molding plant or the area. A quality improvement team has decided to use a design of experience to study the injection molding problem and find out what, what is the effect. The team has found out there are 6 factors, we will mention them as A, B, C, D, E, F. So, what are those? A is mold temperature, B is screw speed, C is holding time, D is cycle time, E is gate size and F is the holding pressure each are at two levels. So, that is why, so if you if you have listened to me carefully, this is the whole crux of the problem which will give you what is the fractional factorization problem. Each are at two design. So, obviously, it will be two. Now, what is the power would basically mean that how many factors are there which is 6. So, actually you would have basically solved 2 to the power 6 um, um, way of, of, of combinations of problems. Now, in this example, we will consider 2 to the power 6 minus 2, because we will be basically doing the generator concept and using, use, utilizing that for a lower level of, of combinations of, of problems. Now, another point which I missed and excuse me for that, is that we are always talking of the fractional factorization of 2 to the power something. So, we are laying more emphasis on those the powers which would basically mean what is the how many factors are there and what is the level of fractional factorizations we are doing to what level of, of significance. Again the word significance in, in a very general English term not from the statistic point of view. But uh, in all these discussions we have intuitively assumed that the level of factors are 2. So, hence it is 2 to the power something. Now, in case if the level of such just significance for any factors was more than 2, obviously the overall concept of trying to analyze the problem would change, so which is very intuitive. So, I will come to that later on very fleetingly, but let me basically discuss the problems as we proceed. 
So, uh, as I read, so there are factors A to F, each at two levels with the objective of learning that how each factor affects the shrinkage and also something about how the factors interact within themselves in order to affect the shrinkage. The team which was doing all this analysis decides to use 16 run two level factorization problem. So, they would basically take 16 runs and, 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 and information about that which is given in table 8.9. The design is shown again in table 8.10 along with the observed shrinkages uh, which are, 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 are for the test part produced in each of the 16 runs in this example. And table 8.11 shows the effects estimate sums of squares and regression coefficient. So, basically table 8.9 and 8.10 are actually the information for the all the 16 runs and as you remember the table where we do all the calculations where in the first column again I am repeating it first column are the factors then their overall effects whether they are plus and minus that would be given in inside the so called matrix then is what are the effects um, which is coming out. Then you have basically the degrees of freedom and before that obviously degrees of freedom you have, we have the start, uh, sum of squares and after the degrees of freedom you have the, um, the mean square errors and after the mean square the f statistic based on which we will pass judgment about the, the analysis of variance. We will also do a nominative plot of, <coughs> of the effect of the estimates and also, also about the residuals and obviously um, try to find out whether the assumptions of normality is true whether the assumptions of the mean value of the errors is 0 or whether the assumptions of the variance of the errors is sigma square which is uh, constant with respect to time they, they are true. So, these are other three very important characteristics or assumptions which we intrinsically assume for all the examples we are doing. The only large effects are basically A which is mole temperature and B which is screw speed and the interaction of AB which is happening in light of this allies relationship between all these six factors. Um, uh, it seems reasonable to adopt these conclusions tentatively and pass judgments accordingly. The plot of AB interaction in figure 8.13 which we will see later on. So, note down the, the figures which I am mentioning it is 8.89, 8.10, 8.11 so on and so forth. So, the plot of AB interaction which means we are taking the effects combined together for factor A and B which are the of the highest level, highest level is not they, they are affecting the most. They show the process is very sensitive to the temperature um, and if the screw speed is at low temperature level, but very sensitive to temperature, it is very insensitive to temperature sorry for that very insensitive to temperature if the screw speed is at low level, but very sensitive to temperature if the screw speed is at high level. With the screw speed at the low level, the process should produce an average shrinkage of about 10 percentage of the regardless of the temperature level chosen. Based on this initial analysis, the team decides to set both the mole temperature and the screw speed at the low level. This set of conditions will reduce the mean shrinkage um, of parts to about 10 percent. However, the variability in the shrinkage from part to part is still a potential problem. We will see that later on. So, I am just reading the problem and then come to the an an analysis first at, at the data and then the analysis using the charts as we have been doing uh, for all the examples. So, in effect the mean shrinkage can be adequately reduced by the above modifications. However, the part to part variability in shrinkage over production run could still cause problems in the assembly line. One way to address this issue is to see if any of the process factors affect the variability of the part shrinkages accordingly. So, let, let us go to this diagram the tables. So, now I uh, will again repeat few things will be repetition please bear with me, but, but it will make things much clear to you. So, this is a fractional factorization problem of 2 to the power 6 minus 2 because there are 6 factors A, B, C, D, E, F minus 2 because we are trying to basically find out the generators accordingly. There were 16 runs if you notice the first column on this um, this slide. So, that they are the run numbers from 1 to 16. Now, the effects which you are taking for the factors is like this. We will consider the effects of A, B, C, D and E and F would be a combination of the those 4 factors which are considered as A, B, C, D and which is affecting positively and which is neg affecting neg negatively. Then we will basically have the ob ob observed sig significance and then give the 
effects which are coming in terms of the factors by itself. So, let me go one by one it will become clear what I just did mention. So, consider run 1 I will just highlight it using a color blue or yellow for run 1 the effect of A is negative, B is negative, C, D, E, F are all negative. So, obviously, the observed shrinkage is 6 and it will basically the the effects for which none of them are significant. Now, if I go to let me use a different color, if I go to row 2 which is run 2, I have effect of A s positive, E s positive. So, if I see the overall um, uh, factors which are affecting are E and E where I am just basically highlighting now. If I go to I uh, will use another different color. If I go to see for example, um, the run number 7 effect of B, C are positive others are negative. So, you see the, the in the fractional factorization model the effects are coming from B and C. If I use say for example, let me use another color. So, if I use the <coughs> I pay attention to the 13th uh, run. So, it is um, positive positive for C and D positive for E. So, the overall effect is C and D where I am just highlighting and lastly if I see the effect coming out let me use another uh, color where blue uh, let me use the dark one. It may be difficult for you to read but please bear with me. If you see the 16th run it is positive for all and the observed shrinkage values which we already know have been calculated. So, the effects are basically for A, B, C, D, E, F combined together. Now, each are at two levels. So, these are uh, the factors that explanation in qual qualitative sense the levels of minus 1 and plus 1. So, the variables are I will use the same color of the highlighter continuing it is A, B, C, D, E, F. They are mole temperature, screw speed which I have said I will again repeat it. Holding time, cycle time, gate size, hold pressure. The minus 1 and plus 1 levels are given. So, for all of them if you remember it is 2 to the power something. So, the, that 2 basically de denotes the 2 levels for all these factors. Now, if I go to the overall averages. So, the overall average is now what I have is basically for A, B, C, D, E, F taking 2 at 1 at a time. Then the combinations goes of A, B and C, then A, C and B that means taking 2 at a time then A, D and E, F and then we go to the combinations of taking 2 at a time but 3 combinations which is A, E, B, C and D, F. So, the, all the combinations are given here the regression coefficients for the runs are given here, the estimated effects and the sum of the squares are given here. So, what is important is the sum of squares which I will basically highlight it with a different color. So, these are the sums of the squares which will be important for us and I will just highlight it. This is important for us. Now, once I basically have the effect estimates and if you pay attention to eight uh, figure 8.12 and 8.13, this is basically like this. We are trying doing the normality plots with respect to the effect estimates in 8.12 and we are doing the shrinkage plots with respect to mole temperature. So, shrinkage plots is basically the effect which, are, which we want to find out with respect to one of the factors which is mole temperature which is factor A. So, both uh, in both these cases uh, for say for example, for 8.13 they are linear because there are two levels. So, in, in, in this case when I am taking the effects of, of um, mole temperature with shrinkage at the lower level it is almost stagnant for values of high levels of shrinkage it is basically increasing linearly. But very interestingly the effects of temperature with normality plots are not normal. Because if you pay attention here, there is always skewness here and if you pay attention there is huge amount of outliers which are there. Technically, they are not normal, but we will still continue the example and continue with the discussion. If you do the normality plots of residuals for, ex for this example, 
So, normal plot with the residual intervals here it is much better even though at the extremes there are outliers. So, it is basically like this. So, still it is much better and if you do the, the residual plots along the holding time the overall dispersion is very skewed. So, in, in low temperature it is as, as you remember the effect is almost nil. So, it is very um, uh, on the negative side and for the, the high temperature is more on the positive side because the effects are much more because if you see there is an effect 6 there are 2 fours, but here everything is basically between the bandwidth of 0 to minus 4. So, figure 8.14 represents the normality, normal probability plot of the residuals. This plot appears satisfactory. The plots of the residuals versus each factor when they, when they are constructed would obviously give us the information as needed. One of these plots that is for residuals versus factor C that is holding time is shown in figure 8.15. The plot reveals that there is much less scattered in the residuals at the lower holding temperature than at the higher temperature, high holding time. These residuals were obtained in the usual way from the model for the predictive shrinkage. So, the shrinkage models what we have is basically y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 1 2 in x 1 x 2 because you have now basically two factors and obviously there would be error, error term. So, the best fit areas uh, the best fit estimates which we find find out for beta naught which is beta naught hat is 27.3125 for beta 1 hat is 6.9375 for beta 1 2 hat is basically comes ok for sorry sorry my mistake for me beta naught it comes out to be 27.3125 for beta 1 hat it comes out to be 6.9375 for beta 2 hat it comes out to be 17.8125 and finally, for beta hat suffix 1 2 it comes out to be 5.9375. So, these are x 1 x 2 x and x 1 x 2 x 1 x 2 separately x 1 x 2 and x 1 x 2 combined are the effects which is happening for A, for B and for A B. The residual errors are errors as we know is basically y minus y hat which is the actual value minus the predicted value. So, the regression model used to produce the residuals essentially removes the location effects of basically we are trying to find out. Uh, and remember that figure 8.15 which we just discussed gives us the pattern or the type of relationship which already exi exists. So, let me continue reading it. Figure 8.15 indicates that there is a pattern in the variability and that the variability in the shrinkage of the parts may be smaller when the holding time is at a lower level than at a higher level. So, uh, we will basically continue reading it which basically means the analysis of the residuals which are shown in 8.12. In this table the residuals are, are arranged at the lower level and the higher level for each factors and the standard deviation for the residuals at the low and the high level of each factors and are to be calculated have been calculated. Note that the standard deviation of the residuals with C at the low, le low level is considerably smaller than the, the standard deviation of the residuals at the higher level. Based on that if you do the calculations, we can find out what is the, the, the statistic which is used which is basically F i uh, star where f i star would basically be calculated using the logarithmic of the ratios of, of the standard error squares at positive level and standard error squares with at the negative level that means at the higher level and the lower level. Recall that if the variance of the residuals at the high and the low levels of factors i are equal then this ratio is approximately normally distributed with the mean 0 and it can be used to adjust the difference of the response variability of this. Because the ratio of f star which we just found out and which we just discussed is relatively high, we would conclude that the apparent dispersion of the variability effect observed in this fig in figure 8.15 is real. Thus, setting the holding time at a lower level <coughs> would contribute to reducing the variability in the shrinkage from part to part during the production runs. Hence, figure of 8.16 represents a normality, normal probability plot of F i star values in a table 8.12. This also indicates that factor C has a large dispersion effect with respect to the other factors. Figure 8.17 shows that the data from the experiment pro 
projected onto a cube in the factors of A, B, C, which are the factors which are significant. The av average observed shrinkage and the range of observed shrinkages are shown at each corner points of this cube. So, obviously, there would be a combination based on which at the cube points, which will give the effects of these factors, either it is A, B or C or whatever combination you want, depending on the outcome of the experiment. So, it is not arbitrarily, it basically depends on the the way that the problem has been analyzed and what information we are getting from the problem. From inspection of this figure, we see that running the process with the skew speed b at a lower level is the key to reducing the average power shrinkage. If b is low, virtually any combination of temperature a and holding c will result in low values of average power shrinkages. However, from examining the ranges of shrinkage values at each corner of this cube, it is immediate to cl clear that setting the holding time c at a lower level is the only reasonable choice if we wish to keep the part to part variability in shrinkage low during the production process. So, all these things reading which I have done, I will just go to through, the, through these tables once more. Now, if you see the table which is 8.12, you have the runs on the leftmost column which is 1, 2, 16 and the combinations which I have are basically the factors f x which is coming out. So, if you basically pay attention see for example, to the first run you have the effect of a and b as minus, then c as minus, e and d as minus. So, if you can find the overall effect, the positive values would give you the positive effects which we have, based on which we find out the residuals at 2.5. If we consider arbitrarily again the 14th row, the effects are positive for the values which I which I mentioned for a. I will mention some of them for say for example, C and so on and so forth. The value comes out to be minus 5.50. So, based on that I have the positive <coughs> standard deviation, the negative standard deviation and based on that I find on the F statistic as given by the ratio of logarithmic values of S square positive divided by S square negative. Negative and positive means for the positive uh, dispersion movement and the negative movement. When we consider the normality plot of the dispersion effects of f star. So, they are are decently normal apart from one outlier. So, this is uh, almost normal with one outlier here. So, what I am basically plotting the normality plot with respect to where in the x axis you have f i star. If I do and consider figure 8.17 which is the average shrinkage and range of shrinkage in factor a b c com combined together. So, obviously, you will have positive navy effect two, le two, two le uh, levels for factor A, two levels for factor B, two levels for factor C. So, hence the cube and at this point of the, of, the, of the cubes what the values which we have, which will give us the combinations of A, B, C, which are important for us to consider in the example. Now, if you remember that I did mention that we basically generalize to the factors of 2 to the power k minus m. So, here m is basically p. So, general 2 to the power k minus p fractional factorial design problems and we will consider the basic notions about that. Uh, 2 to the power k factorial fractional factorial design consists of 2 to the power k minus p runs is called a 1 by 2 to the power p fractionals of this 2 k model, because we have k factors trying to reduce them uh, by the power of 2 to the power p such that we are able to subsume the overall significance on all the factors to the to, to the maximum efficiency considering the word efficiency where we are able to subsume the effects of least number of factors we give us giving us the maximum amount of information. So, or simply we will we'll basically mention it 2 to the power k minus p frac fractional factorial design. These designs require the selection of p independent generators from this k. The defining relationship of the design consists of p generators initially chosen from this set of, of, of general interaction which we will see. The last structure may be found by multiplying each effect to column by defining the relationship. Care should be taken to exercise in choosing the generator so that effects of potential interest are not aliased with each other. Hence, we will basically consider 2 to the power k minus p depending on the aliased structure and the generator concept. It is important to select the p generators from for a 2 to the power k minus p fractional factorial design in such a way that we obtain the best possible alias relationship. 
A reasonable criteria is to select the generator such that the resulting to the power k minus p design has the highest possible resolution. So, let us look at an example accordingly. So, here we had the, the construction of 2 to the power k minus 2. Um, uh, so, k minus p, so k was basically 6, p was basically 2. So, this is the 2 to the power 6 minus 2 suffix 4 design with generators i which was a, b, c, e and i which was b, c, d, e. So, that means we are considering two generators, the runs for 16 in number, basic design factors are given for the column or for the row which is a, b, c, d and the generator which was E and F. Here we used generators E and generators F, thereby producing a design of resolution 7. So, obviously, it was of 4. So, obviously, the resolution would depend on number of generators. This is the maximum resolution design which we can basically get. If you select E, e as A, B, C, F at A, B, C, D, the complete defining resolution would be basically have three generators which is A, B, C, E, A, B, C, D, E and D, E, F and, and it would be a resolution 3, 3. So, depending on how many such generators you have and what is the resolution, you can basically design the generator, generators accordingly. Clearly, this is an inferior choice because it and needlessly sacrifices the information about interaction because you are trying to basically have more generators and sacrificing the effects of individual factors in the analysis of the problem. Sometimes resolution alone is insufficient to distinguish between designs. For example, consider the three design designs in a problem as discussed in table 8.13. All of the designs of resolution 4, but they have rather different alloy structures um, uh, as we have assumed that three factors and higher interaction are negligible with respect to two factor interactions. Clearly, design A has more existing extensive aliasing and design C at the least. So, design C would be the best choice be, um, uh, based on the on the assumptions which you have. The three word length in design A are basically 4, then the word length would basically be 4, 4, 4 depending on how you are trying to analyze. For B it would be 4, 4, 6 and C would be 4, 5, 5 depending on the overall structure we have analyzed for the problem. So, notice that def defining relationship for design C has only one four letter word, whereas the other designs have two or three depending on the problem formulation which we have done. So, obviously, A, B, C can be interchanged. So, uh, the output would be designed accordingly. So, it A would not be 4, 4, 4 anymore. It will be depending on how the design has been done. So, three choices of gener generation generators for 2, 7 minus 2 of resolution 4 would be Designing A generators, so the generators are basically F, G and I is basically A, B, C, F, generator 1, B, C, D, G, generator 2, A, D, F, G, which is generator 3. So, now there are 7 factors, which is basically A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Based on that, as I mentioned, the generators are A, B, C, F, A, B, B, C, D, G and A, D, F, G. In the design of, 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 of design B generators, we have basically the generators given as I is A, B, C, F, A, D, E, G and B, C, D, E, F, G. So, based on the combinations of how we have assumed F and G. So, come if you consider the first problem, F was A, B, C, G was B, C, D. In the second example of design fa fa factor based on B generations, you will basically have F as A, B, C and G as A D A D G. And if I come, come to the design of C generators, F is A B C D and G is A B D E. So, hence the generators would be A B C D F, A B D E G and C E F G. So, we will consider these examples in more detail in the, in the 27th class and with this I will end this lecture. Have a nice day and thank you very much.